Hello everyone, I'm Skyris, a member of the dev team for the unofficial Fallout Vaults and DevClaws role-playing system. Our goal is to get our system to be an official role-playing system. If you would like to support this project, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and follow our other social medias in the description below to keep up to date with the development of the system. Today, we'll be covering vehicles. We are covering general information only. If you wish to look in depth into the rules, refer to the Google Doc link in the description. Let's begin. Working vehicles are extremely rare in the Fallout world. They can range from a simple rowboat to a vertebrate. The pilot skill revolves around the usage of vehicles in combat and traveling. They open the world to players on a much larger scale. Being able to travel great distances within a matter of hours changes the course of a campaign. Vehicles are not to be given to players, but they are earned through either prying it off a powerful faction or making their own through sweat, blood, and tears. It's highly recommended that overseers talk with their players about the presence of vehicles before the campaign starts. If they put points into the pilot skill and never get the opportunity to use it, they'll be disappointed. If the overseer plans to use vehicles, it's best to introduce them at a small scale at level 5. Small scale could be a bicycle or a steamboat that travels up and down a river. At level 8 or above, the party should have the experience and wealth to have access to a car, motorcycle, etc. to make travel easier. Vehicles make anyone a target in the wasteland, and they're easy to spot since most of them are loud. But aside from being targets, vehicles require heavy maintenance. Make sure your players know the responsibilities of owning a vehicle. Vehicles in combat function similar to a standard combat, but don't be afraid to keep it restricted to them. Vehicle chases, jumping off ramps in order to crash into a building, crashing into other vehicles, these are all example situations that could prove to be difficult to handle, but be realistic and reasonable in these situations. Overseers, we do not cover every vehicle in existence. It's best to use a vehicle that's similar to what you want and modify it slightly. Don't make it overbearing and add several mechanics. An example of this would be how vehicles such as aircraft carriers or airships like the Pridwin cannot use the standard vehicle rules. These are structures which can be piloted. The driver or pilot is the one who is operating the vehicle. The driver gains a new AP limit which is separate from their own, the vehicles. As the driver, you can only use the vehicle's AP. The driver must have at least one hand operating the vehicle. Drivers get a minus 50 hit chance. You can only do one type of attack a turn while driving. If the driver switches places, the AP spent is applied to the new driver. Drivers cannot move the vehicle the same turn they enter and turn on the vehicle. In the turn order, the driver sequence is ruled normally. Refer to vehicle AP actions for additional information. All vehicles have HP. If the vehicle has an engine and its HP reaches zero, the vehicle won't explode. If it is was in motion, it will continue to move in the direction it was going until either it stops or runs into something. The driver can still maneuver the vehicle, but every round after it reaches zero HP, it will go down in speed and it cannot be changed by the driver. For example, if you were going fast speed, on the next turn the vehicle will go average speed, and the turn after that it will go slow speed. All pilot penalties for vehicles are doubled when at zero HP. The turn after it goes slow speed, it will stop. If after reaching 0 HP, the vehicle takes half or more of its max HP during a single turn, it'll explode. If it has an engine, the engine determines the explosion. If the vehicle lacks an engine, it's destroyed and where it was on it falls off. When a vehicle reaches 0 HP, any mods such as radios, mounts, etc. cannot be used. As long as the vehicle has 1 HP, they can be used. A seating refers to how many individuals can fit in a vehicle. One seating is equal to one medium. Two seating is equal to one large. Four seating is equal to one huge. Half a seating is equal to one small. Gargantuan cannot fit in vehicles. If you surpass the seating limit of a vehicle, the vehicle gets AP-2 for each seating over. If the AP is lowered up to the minimum, no one nor nothing else can get on the vehicle. If you do, the overseer may restrict its speed or it might not be able to move at all. One seating is equal to 200 pounds for the purposes of using seating as storage only. For seating arrangements, refer to the photographs of the vehicles, although most of them are common sense. If you're in a vehicle, anyone that attempts to attack you takes half cover penalties. This penalty doesn't apply to ATVs, bicycles, and motorcycles. This is upon the overseer's discretion. If a character appears to be carrying too much, they might take up more seating. Players must state where in a vehicle they're seated. This is upon the overseer's discretion. You may share a space with another player if both you are in a vehicle. Size refers to how long, thick, and tall the vehicle is. The size reference is length times width times height. Storage is the inventory of the vehicle. Store items in your vehicles and make sure you lock it before you head out. You cannot exceed the storage limit. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with the development of our system. We'll see you next time. Take care.